Hi, I'm Shani Ferguson in Jerusalem, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what happened last night, actually this morning. It was just a few hours ago when Iran finally fired on Israel. And when I say finally, I mean this. Iran has actually been attacking Israel for years. They've just been doing it through a proxy, meaning instead of firing at us directly, they go to Syria, they go to Lebanon, and even more recently, Hamas train them, provide them with weapons and all sorts of expertise and a whole lot of funding. The reason last night or this morning was so significant was because they finally fired on us directly and that has all sorts of repercussions when it comes to international law. Now, in terms of Iran, and it's adorable that they really, really feel like they obeyed the rules, and that's the conversation they're having with the UN right now, is that Israel is being accused of taking out a guy in Syria, but near the Iranian consulate. And the reason this guy is so important to Iran is because he was the coordinator guy between Iran and Syria and Lebanon. He's got lots of connections and lots of experience, including being involved with the death of hundreds of unarmed Iranians who were out protesting for their freedom. Which as a side note, the communications that we're getting from the Iranian people who are strangely very well connected to the internet is please, please come take out our government so that we can be free. This type of communication is not entirely unheard of in Gaza as well. So about the time that Israeli parents were putting their children to sleep, Iran launched over a hundred drones. Now let me explain, when I say drones, I don't mean those little tiny cute things that you fly over your house and take pictures. I mean unmanned aircrafts that are going to travel for hours and then come and explode in someone's house. So as we were watching the news at two in the morning, because who wants to go to sleep when we have such a package coming from Iran, the news broadcaster says we have 12 minutes because missiles, not rockets, missiles have now been fired and they take 12 minutes to arrive. That's when the sirens go off in Jerusalem and all of Southern Israel. Can I tell you that I'm a big fan of thunder? but there was nothing to the shaking of the sky for some 20 minutes as our air defense completely annihilates the missiles, the drones, and everything else in between that they sent our way. Of course, we didn't do it by ourselves. The US and the UK were involved and a bunch of other Middle Eastern countries who really don't want credit for helping us. So a lot of the conversation that's going on today is A, how successful the air defense was against this Iranian attack I don't think Iran expected to have such little impact with so much. The second was how surprised everyone that the U.S. with all the bickering that has gone back and forth between Biden and Netanyahu, how America came and stood by Israel's side and how even France and Canada and other world leaders who have been very antagonistic against Israel and the war in Gaza have stood by Israel with this attack. It's fascinating because for a moment, it's like everyone realizes that this has never been a fight of Israel against this tiny group of Palestinians. This is a war of world powers together with countries in the Middle East who have been fighting Israel for years. The only person that was actually hurt in Israel was a seven-year-old Bedouin girl who was out in the desert when pieces of the remains of the missiles fell on her head and she's been in the hospital. As of now, she's not doing well. This morning, although schools have been canceled for the week, Israelis went out, took their kids to the park, went to the coffee shop, and continued on with their life. Not because last night wasn't really scary, but because we know that we know that we know that our country will be here the day after. For more information and how you can get involved, go to IsraelNeedsMe.com. Until next time, I'm Shani Ferguson.